The Trouble with Old Steam Locomotives, Part 20, Completing the Job. I thought it would be a good idea to have a look inside the steam chest to see what the valve events were. Just out of curiosity really, because as you saw in the last episode, the engine runs OK. I've removed the bolts and now I'm removing the steam chest cover. What I'm going to do is rotate the wheels and see at what point in the rotation of the wheels the slide valve uncovers the ports at each end. And it seems OK, if anything the timing is a little bit retarded, but I'm going to leave it as it is. Using the logic, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Nothing else on this small locomotive could be classed as being perfect, and at this stage of the job I'm not going to go into obsess mode by endlessly tweaking the slide valve. Besides that, with this valve gear, there's much more than the slide valve to be taken into consideration. So this will work fine. At the moment I'm refitting the steam chest cover, and for the studs that came out when I undid the nuts, I'm using the lock nut method to replace them. All you do is just lock a couple of nuts on the end of the stud, that way the stud can be screwed all the way into the casting. Some of the studs ended up protruding slightly above the nuts, but that's not as bad as it was. Initially, to refit the studs and the nuts, I used a socket. This made the job very simple, because there's plenty of room to work on this locomotive in this area. After spinning the nuts on with the socket, I tightened them with a spanner. Here's a close-up view of the lock nut method of installing long studs into cylinder castings. This is a far better method than using a pair of pliers on the stud. All you do is use two lock nuts locked together on the end of the stud and screw it into the hole. And when you're nearly there, remove the socket and use a spanner to tighten the lower nut against the steam chest cover. After fitting the last two nuts and giving them all a final tightening with the spanner, the steam chest looks like this. The gasket was in good condition, so I didn't see the need to make a new one, and this should be fine. Time now to refit the cab. I carefully wrestled it back into place, and then I started to spanner it back together. I didn't video the fitting of the nuts to the threaded part that sticks out of the water tank, because I couldn't get the camera into a suitable position to do this. Fitting the two 4BA bolts at each side that hold the main cab to the running board was quite easy. That's the cab refitted, so what's next? When I received this engine to repair, the floor in the cab was missing. And now it's time to make a new one. I've found a suitable piece of steel plate that is just about the right thickness. This is a very simple job, I just measured the hole in the cab floor, and here I'm marking out the piece of steel plate ready for cutting. For this job I'm going to use my Burgess bandsaw. This blade is not a good blade, mainly because when I fitted it I got confused, and I screwed up the new blade and threw it in the bin. Why did it get confused? Well, when you make videos like these you have to give great attention to the camera, focus, angle, etc, etc, and I was too busy doing that and I just forgot when I picked up the blade to screw it up and throw it in the bin. I got the new blade out of the bin, bent it back into shape and fitted it to the bandsaw, and that's why it makes a bit of a strange noise. After cutting out the new floor using the bandsaw, I then used my 4 inch belt sander to clean up the edges, and it fits perfectly. It just needs cutting to accommodate the piping. I've marked out the positions where I'm going to cut the floor, so it's back over to the bandsaw to cut out these two pieces. And now it looks like this, and it fits really well. It's a tight fit in the hole and snaps in place. The floor doesn't need any fixings to hold it in place, because the right hand side of it slides under the coal bunker. All I need to do now to finish the job is paint it, but before I do that, preparation is everything. In this clip, at high speed, I'm scoring the surface using some 100 grit emery cloth. By doing this, the paint will stick firmly to it. If I painted the normally smooth surface of a piece of mild steel, the paint would probably flake off over time. I'm scoring both sides because I'm going to paint both sides. Here's a top tip, I want to paint both sides at the same time. And I'm doing it like this, I only drew round the part, just for effect, to show me where to hammer in the pins. I'm being very careful not to nail the piece of wood to the bench, that's why I keep looking underneath it. 
Here's the principle. The piece of metal sits on the pins. I paint one side, then I turn it over. And so, OK, there will be four slight marks on one side of the paint, but that's going to be the underneath, so it's not going to be a problem. And the general idea is I will paint the underneath first. And I'm using the Auto Paint Northern etching primer that I normally use. After shaking it for several minutes, I give the part a good coating. It's better really when using etching primer to spray it on thinly. That's the underside painted. And now I'm turning it over, sitting it on the pins. And now it's time to paint the top surface. This is the one that will show, so it needs to be quite well painted. Also, I'm not forgetting the edges. A few hours later, it's time for the top coat. And for this, I'm using HMG Satin Black Paint. This is a spray enamel. It's really good stuff from HMG Paints. I've put the website addresses on screen for both Auto Paint Northern and HMG Paints. So if you want some of this stuff, that's who to contact. This HMG Paints Satin Black is what they use at the Steam Workshop. That's where I first found out what it was. And it's a perfect finish for the frames of steam locomotives. Oh yes, and floors. That's about it for this series. I'm unable to steam test this without help. If the owner of the engine wants me to steam test it when he picks it up, I will. But I'm sure it will work fine anyway. It really is a good deal better than it was when I received it to repair it. As far as I'm aware, now the engine is repaired and a runner. It has a boiler certificate and the owner is going to put it up for sale. But that's my part of the job done. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.